Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. As usual, we are going to check about the platform. So this is it. And uh, this is the question for tonight, okay? So you can participate. Also, remember to do the exercise 17. El 17 es un reading también. Si le damos clic aquí, nos hace más grande la lectura. Uh, y pues sería de contestar, ¿verdad? De contestar true or false, de acuerdo al reading. Ok, vamos a entonces a chequear el attendance. So, Álvaro Ernesto Alvarado Reyes. Present teacher. Good. Blanca Jennifer Torres de Martínez. Blanca Ruth Orantes Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Brenda Jamilet Bonilla de Villa Toro. Present teacher. Good. Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martínez. Present. Good. Carlos Francisco Arias Sánchez. Present teacher. Good. Daniel Eduardo García López. Edwin Antonio Quinteros Umaña. Present teacher. Good. Eulice Torres Torres. Fátima Noemí Umaña Castro. Gabriela Jamilet Sánchez Martínez. Irving Isaí Cruz Mejía. I'm here. Good. Jocelyn Esmeralda Amaya Vázquez. Presente. Good. José Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. I'm here. Good. Josman Atilio Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Karen Lisette Sánchez Castro. Catherine Indira Velázquez Castro. Marlon Osvaldo Paniagua Hernández. Rolando Antonio Cáceres Aquino. Present. Good. Rosa del Carmen Enríquez Flores. Present. Good. And Karen Jamilet Rivas de Ayala. Okay, so we are going to start the class. Ayer estuvimos viendo del pasado simple, ¿verdad? Entonces, es uno de los temas más importantes porque es todo un tiempo. So, it's very important for you to, to remember. No he podido mandar los, uh, los, las capturas de los verbos, pero mañana se los voy a mandar, ¿ok? Y de un par de cosas más que hemos visto. Ok, we are going to start with a video. Vamos a iniciar con un video, entonces. Se los pongo y luego vamos a comentar. Ok, este es un poco largo. A ver qué entendemos. A ver si le podemos poner los subtítulos. Sí, ahí está. Ok, very good. Perfect. So, let's check the video. Ok, Gabriela, ahorita le pongo antes de que iniciamos con el video. Let's see here. Here, here, here. Ok. So, let's check the video okay here we go one of the most effective modes of training is on-the-job training or OJT two of the most important phases of virtually all OJT programs are implementation and evaluation Implementation involves carrying out the training program as it was planned, and evaluation involves determining whether the goals of the training program have been met. On-the-job training is an effective way to teach a trainee how to do a job. However, for this type of training to work well, the instructor must be capable and qualified. In this part of the program, we'll examine the qualities and characteristics of a good OJT instructor. Probably the most important characteristics are knowledge of the job and the ability to communicate that knowledge well. When instructing a trainee, you'll need to explain technical and sometimes complex information in simple, understandable terms. Before conducting OJT, instructors commonly go through some form of training on how to teach effectively. 
In addition, an OJT instructor may sometimes need to improve or upgrade job skills that will be taught to others. Besides the ability to communicate well, a number of other factors may also contribute to being a good OJT instructor. One factor is the employee's experience in the plant. An experienced worker will likely be very familiar with plant operations and will have acquired a great deal of knowledge that can be passed on to trainees. Also, by working in the plant over a period of time, the veteran usually has the respect of co-workers and is generally viewed positively in a position of authority. How an instructor handles this position of authority is another important factor. A good instructor must be able to display good leadership qualities. Good leadership qualities are particularly important if the instructor has to train someone of roughly the same job experience, age, or background. This type of situation can become awkward and counterproductive if the instructor is not an effective leader. An effective OJT instructor is one who can help a trainee learn without taking advantage of the position of authority. Another factor is the instructor's overall attitude. If you don't have a positive attitude, you may set a bad example for the trainee, and if so, you won't be an effective teacher. When instructing trainees, an OJT instructor should be objective and attempt to teach all trainees equally. You should make a conscious effort not to play favorites. During OJT, the trainee will have to get accustomed to having someone looking over his shoulder and watching his every move. One of your goals as an OJT instructor is to create a comfortable environment in which the trainee can learn. You don't want the trainee feeling intimidated. He must feel at ease so that he'll ask questions when he doesn't understand something. One way to put a trainee at ease is to discuss your own experiences when you were training to be an operator. Admitting that you may not have done everything flawlessly right off the bat will reassure the trainee that mistakes are part of the learning process. So encourage him to ask questions on anything that he's unsure about. And if one of his questions stumps you, don't be ashamed to admit it. Just let him know you'll check into it and get back to him. As an OJT instructor, you may be teaching trainees who have virtually no background knowledge, so don't take anything for granted. Depending on their abilities, different trainees will progress at different rates. But as an instructor, you must remain patient, even when a trainee may not be grasping an aspect of a job that seems simple to you. Before OJT is implemented, certain plans and preparations have to be made to help ensure the success of the training program. Scheduling is an important concern when planning on-the-job training, since OJT must be scheduled around the operations of the unit. The training department must coordinate its plans with the unit or line supervisor. Both must be aware of when the on-the-job training occurs and who is involved. As an OJT instructor, you should also have a plan or strategy for scheduling. If you have any flexibility in scheduling the OJT, you should coordinate when to cover each task with when the tasks are scheduled to be performed in the plant. The time that the training will occur is another important factor. For example, if any of the training must be conducted outside, then it may be better to schedule the training during the daylight hours than at night. However, if the trainee will be required to perform the actual job at night, then it might be preferable to train him under similar conditions. It may also be better to schedule certain tasks early in the shift so that both the instructor and the trainee will be more alert. When scheduling training, another factor to consider is the trainee to instructor ratio. Often, on-the-job training is conducted on a one-on-one -on -one basis. However, depending on the circumstances, there may be more than one trainee for each instructor. Keep in mind, though, that the more trainees there are, the less time each will have to perform the job procedures. The more trainees there are, the more likely it is for certain trainees to simply watch someone else instead of doing the steps themselves. So when planning OJT, make sure that you schedule enough time for each trainee to practice all of the job skills. Before implementing OJT, you should review the responsibilities and procedures involved in the job that you'll be teaching. If you're unsure about any aspects of the job, clear them up before the training begins. 
Another preparation is to collect and organize any materials that are needed. This includes any tools and safety gear that are required for the job. Depending on the job, you may want to demonstrate and explain how the tools or safety gear work before heading out into the plant. Other training materials include performance objectives and OJT checklists. As you may know, a performance objective is a brief description of the outcome or intended result of training. An OJT checklist identifies the steps the trainee must follow to accomplish the performance objective. In this part of the program, we'll look at different methods of conducting an OJT program and identify coaching skills that an instructor can use during OJT. First of all, the instructor and the trainee should review the overall goals of the job. That is, you should explain the purpose of the job and identify the performance objectives. General procedures should be discussed before and during OJT. You should explain why certain steps are required and how they affect the overall job. There may also be special safety or emergency procedures to consider. If so, it's a good idea to go over these with the trainee early on. If you're teaching the equipment in a process unit, it may be a good idea to walk the trainee through the flow path of the process. By doing this, the trainee will become acquainted with the different components in the system and get a basic idea of how they fit together. In addition, you may want to have the trainee get actively involved in the learning. For example, you can have him find the process components on a flow diagram. If the trainee has had any past experience that's similar to the new job, you can make the training easier by comparing the new procedures to the trainee's previous experience. A number of different methods can be used to conduct on-the-job training. The way in which OJT is performed depends on the nature of the job, the preference of the instructor, and the ability of the trainee. For instance, you might first demonstrate the procedures involved. Then allow the trainee to perform the tasks himself, correcting his mistakes and assisting him when needed. On the other hand, for fairly simple tasks, you may decide that demonstrating each task is unnecessary. You may simply explain how to do each step and then have the trainee perform the job himself under your supervision. One technique you can use to teach a long, complex job is to break the job down into smaller, separate tasks. In this way, the trainee will only need to focus on learning one set of job tasks at a time. He won't feel as overwhelmed as he would if he had to learn the whole job at once. Regardless of the training method used, an OJT instructor is like a coach, so you should apply good coaching skills. In general, you will want to instill confidence in the trainee. Encourage him to perform different job tasks and accept new responsibilities. Instead of commenting only when the trainee does something wrong, the instructor should also recognize when things are done correctly. As an instructor, keep in mind that you don't want to overcoach or undercoach. If you overcoach a trainee, he may become too dependent on you. Once he's completed training and is working on the job, he won't be able to rely on your guidance anymore. On the other hand, you don't want to undercoach the trainee either. If you don't give him sufficient guidance, it will take him longer to develop the skills he needs. And the more time it takes for the training to be completed, the more costly it is for your plant. For just about any trainee, it's a good idea to review the main points and procedures so that the trainee will be less likely to forget them. Once the trainee begins performing the tasks of the job himself, you should monitor his progress using any relevant OJT checklists, schedules, or charts. As the trainee performs each step, check off that item on the list and record the date that it was completed. You'll be able to use the list to show the trainee how his progress is measured, and you'll know when the training is completed. As an OJT instructor, you can help instill in the trainee a good attitude and good work habits. For example, at the end of a job, it's important to leave the work area clean. All tools and gear that were used for the job should be put away in their proper places. When an operator completes a job, there may be some paperwork to do. You'll need to show your trainee how to fill out this paperwork when necessary. The trainee should understand that duties like housekeeping and paperwork are important parts of an operator's job. They're not simply extra chores to do when and if there's time. 
by observing how you follow the plant's policies and procedures. The trainee will learn the proper way to conduct himself on the job. Probably the most important characteristics are knowledge of the job and the ability to communicate that knowledge well. When instructing a trainee, you'll need to explain technical and sometimes complex information in simple, understandable terms. The time that the training will occur is another important factor. For example, if any of the training must be conducted outside, then it may be better to schedule the training during the daylight hours than at night. However, if the trainee will be required to perform the actual job at night, then it might be preferable to train him under similar conditions. One technique you can use to teach a long, complex job is to break the job down into smaller, separate tasks. In this way, the trainee will only need to focus on learning one set of job tasks at a time. He won't feel as overwhelmed as he would if he had to learn the whole job at once. During the entire OJT process, the instructor continually evaluates the trainee's performance to monitor his progress and to determine when the trainee has learned how to do the job correctly. One of the most important tools used for trainee evaluation is an OJT checklist. The checklist consists of a list of tasks that must be accomplished to complete a particular job. Each task is checked off as it's completed. As the training progresses, make sure to give the trainee enough practice time. Both you and the trainee should be confident that he can do the job correctly. Also, make sure that his progress and achievements are well documented on the OJT checklist. When you sign off on the checklist, you are verifying that the trainee can do the job. Once the trainee understands and has accomplished all the items on the checklist, he should be able to perform the job on his own. To confirm this, you may want to spot check or review certain items on the checklist again, perhaps the most important ones. Clear records should be kept to keep track of what happened during training. There may also be government regulations requiring the documentation of training. The records are often in the form of a progression chart or training schedule, which indicates what tasks the trainee needs to complete and when. If the trainee is not progressing acceptably, some of the training may need to be repeated, or additional training may be necessary until the trainee is up to speed. If additional training is needed, the unit supervisor or training manager may need to be consulted. Also, if you find that the training is not going well, act professionally and focus on the job at hand to try to figure out a way to get better results. Who knows, by the end of OJT, a problem trainee may turn out to be a very good operator. When the trainee has mastered all of the skills necessary to do the job, his training may not yet be over. Depending on your plant's approach, a formal testing or evaluation of the trainee's ability may have to be conducted. Plants often have their own qualification or certification programs to evaluate their operators. The person administering the formal evaluation may or may not be the OJT instructor. Even if the formal evaluation is conducted by a third party, the OJT instructor can help prepare the trainee. For example, the instructor can explain the types of things he'll need to know and the way in which the evaluation will be conducted. There's more to OJT evaluation than just evaluating the trainee. It's also important to evaluate the training program and the performance of the OJT instructor. This is basically an objective self-evaluation that can be helpful to you when you're planning how to instruct future trainees. A good OJT instructor is flexible enough to adjust training techniques to improve the trainee's performances and the productivity of the overall training program. If you're considering making a change in your training methods, you may want to discuss alternatives with your plant's training department or other OJT instructors. Another good source of information is someone you've recently trained. He will be able to tell you what was most helpful about the training and what could have been improved. You can also get feedback from your trainee's supervisor after the trainee's been on the job a while. The supervisor can let you know if the trainee was well trained, and he may offer suggestions on improvements. With these ideas, you can plan better for instructing new trainees in the future. What we're going to do in this part of the program is review the main steps and principles of on-the-job training. We'll do this by going through an OJT example from beginning to end. This example involves a sampling procedure. 
The first thing to do is determine the training needs for the sampling job. This requires a job and task analysis. A job and task analysis identifies and describes the knowledge and skills a worker needs to perform a job. The trainee is profiled as well to determine what aspects of the sampling procedure he needs to be trained on. The next step is to decide which training needs can be met through OJT. The knowledge-based items, such as the reasons and statistical concepts related to sampling, may need to be discussed in a classroom. The skills-based items, such as the specific sampling procedures, are best taught through OJT. From the task analysis, training materials can be developed. These include performance objectives and OJT checklists. In this example, one performance objective, or intended result of the job, is the taking of representative and uncontaminated liquid samples. And these are some of the checklist steps that have to be done to meet the performance objective. Training is implemented even before a sample is taken. The instructor goes over some of the basics, such as what the sample is, how it's going to be used by the plant, and how abnormal samples affect the process. The proper sampling equipment, including chemical gloves, sample bottles, labels, tongs, and any other safety gear, is also assembled and explained before taking samples. Then the instructor goes through the steps on the checklist. The instructor also emphasizes why the job's done a certain way. For example, she points out that to get a good sample, you need to let the liquid run a few seconds first. The instructor also stresses that it doesn't take much to contaminate a sample, so details like rinsing the bottle thoroughly and putting the cap on right away are important. Then the trainee is given a chance to take a sample. The instructor documents and evaluates his performance by checking off the items on the checklist and determines whether the performance objectives are met. The trainee may also be given a written test on sampling as part of his evaluation. Finally, the OJT program itself, including the instructor, is evaluated to determine the effectiveness of the program. During the entire OJT process, the instructor continually evaluates the trainee's performance to monitor his progress and to determine when the trainee has learned how to do the job correctly. One of the most important tools used for trainee evaluation is an OJT checklist. The checklist consists of a list of tasks that must be accomplished to complete a particular job. Each task is checked off as it's completed. There's more to OJT evaluation than just evaluating the trainee. It's also important to evaluate the training program and the performance of the OJT instructor. This is basically an objective self-evaluation that can be helpful to you when you're planning how to instruct future trainees. A good OJT instructor is flexible enough to adjust training techniques to improve the trainee's performances and the productivity of the overall training program. The first thing to do is determine the training needs for the sampling job. This requires a job and task analysis. A job and task analysis identifies and describes the knowledge and skills a worker needs to perform a job. Okay, what did you understand on this video? Getting the design. Fue bastante información, me imagino que van a decir muchas cosas. ¿Qué entendimos? Anybody? Hi, teacher. Uh, processes, uh, checklist, uh, and preparation for processes, uh, instruments to work. Okay, very good. Process about corporation, about training. Any other? Uh, correct, there is the, the trainer, the job, and good, um, and good uh, trainer, and supervisor, and good experience to practice the, the job, and different characteristics, the character, the, the job uh, in, in the, in the, in, in presa. 
the company. In the company, exactly. Okay, very good, interesting. That's very accurate. Anybody else's? Nobody else's. Okay. Está bastante largo, pero creo que es una buena manera de practicar. Vamos a ver uno más, pero este es cortito, tres minutitos. So let's see how it goes. <música> So we have all felt the pain of death by a survey. You know that feeling when you're sitting there being asked question after question, you're investing your precious time, you're providing the feedback in these complicated questions that go on and on and on. And when you finish the survey, you really wonder, will it even make a difference? Well, here to share some of his great insights, his tips, his tricks, and how to make a great post-event survey is our Chief Engagement Officer, Todd Hansen. Great evaluations rely on creating a simple yet effective survey. Let's get started with our simple 555 formula. Five questions, five minutes, five mentions. So first is five questions. Important here is to write those questions in first person. They're easy to read, easy to complete. And your questions need to be clearly written. And in fact, have someone that has nothing to do with your event review the question, they're going to be able to assure that your questions are nice and clear and concise. And also have only one metric per question. A little tip for that is if you've written a question in your survey and it includes the word and, you probably have more than one metric. An example of that would be, I have the knowledge I need to launch a new product. And then after those questions, include a comment box so people can elaborate. Second thing is five minutes. We want a survey that only takes five minutes to complete. One way to do that is to make sure your questions are in a logical order. Typically that's chronological, so as the event went, so should your questions. You also want to use a simple scale. Make sure it's consistent. A five-point Likert scale is the best, and that would provide an option for a response from strongly agree to strongly disagree with a neutral option. And last five is five mentions. Tell the audience that a survey is coming. Make sure you do that in the announcement or the invitation or your website. And during your event, mention the survey in the opening, in the middle, maybe it's at lunch, and in your closing comments. And then lastly, in follow-up correspondence, whatever kind of follow-up there is, remind them the survey is coming and you really want to hear how the event went. So we hope these tips and tricks will remove the pain of enduring unbearable surveys for your audience. On behalf of your friends at Creative Visions, have a great event. Okay, what did you understand on this one? Anybody? Nadita de nada. Teacher, este, yo lo que entendí es que eh, quizás se eh, explica cómo, cómo evaluar, cómo diseñar una evaluación para evento, pero eh, no, no le alcancé a comprender todo lo que, lo que explicó sino que solo algunas partes. Perfecto. Sí, eso es lo que, lo que trata de explicar, cómo evaluar un evento. Muy bien, es, sí, ahorita en el nivel que estamos, definitivamente no vamos a entender todo, pero si entiende algo, that is very good. Porque esta gente habla eh, inglés nativo, entonces, that is, that is very good. Sí, el, el primer video se entendió bastante mejor que el segundo. Ok. Tal vez lo que pasa es que a veces uno no lo puede expresar, Ah, okay. ¿verdad? Pero, pero sí, el primero sí estaba buen inglés, buen inglés. Ok, perfecto, very good. Vamos a ir viendo más videos. De hecho, ahora vamos a ver uno más, pero no ahorita porque vamos a pasar a otra cosa eh, para que vayan escuchando otros acentos y otra manera de hablar inglés. Ok.
now we're gonna go to the class of tonight, talking about performance reports. Y estos son ejemplos de performance report. Ok. Pues solo es un dibujito, pero sí vamos a ver un par de cosas más. Vamos a repetir, everybody. What is a performance report? What is a performance, What is a performance report? Performance report? A performance report. A performance, a performance report. Is a document that a company. Is a document that a company. That a company creates to define and measure. Creates to the define and measure. It's overall success. It's overall success. It provides an overview. It provides an overview. overview on how the business is performing. On how, how the, the business, business is performing. performing. To do this, to to do do this, do this performance reports mainly collects performance, performance reports reports mainly mainly collects. Collects. Specific work performance data. Specific work performance data. Analyze it. Analyze it. Analyze it. And provide suggestions. And provide, and provide suggestions. To help in making decisions. To help to in making decisions. decisions. This report can narrow down. This, this report, report can narrow down, down and concentrate on the performance concentrated on the performance of a specific project of a specific project or an employee or focus or an employee or focus on the entire business itself. On the business Okay, pronunciation questions. Uh, after the fine and miss measure. 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 Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh -huh. Teacher pronunciation, second line, letter perform report mainly. Uh, mainly. Yeah, mainly. 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 Uh -huh. Mainly. Okay. Thank you. Good. Any la other? Palabra, la palabra de, de éxito, la que está al final, la primera línea. Success. Success. ¿Cómo? Success. Success. So, success. 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 Okay, any other? Data. Um, Esa se puede decir data o data. De las dos maneras está. Data. Data provide data. on provide on our view or ¿Cómo se pronuncia? Provide an overview. Déjeme la encuentro. Um, second, um, A overview. Uh -huh. Overview. Okay. Overview. Narrow. <clears throat> Narrow, yeah, narrow. Teacher, este, concentrate. Exactly. Concentrate. Concentrate. And concentrate. En la que dicen tire, en, ¿cómo se pronuncia? Uh, déjeme la busco. La última línea. Uh, entire. 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 
teacher. Qual? Itself. Itself. Business. Itself. 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 Ok, let's practice them. Vamos a leer entonces. All right, vamos a iniciar mm. con Álvaro Ernesto Alvarado. Ok. What is a performance report? Defini defini definition. A performance report is a document that a company creates to define in the measure. It is over overall. Overall. Overall success. Overall success. It is provides an overview of how the business is performing. To do, do this performance report, mainly call it a specific work performance day. Data analysis. Data analysis. Analysis. Analyze. Analyze and provide su su suggestion to help in, in making decision. This report can the report can narrow don't and uh, concent concentrate 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 on the performance. A specific project or an employee, employee, or focus on the entire, entire, entire business itself. Okay, very good, perfect. So, Blanca Ruth, what is performance report definition? A performance report is a document that a company creates to define, define, define and measure its <clears throat> overall, overall, overall success. 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 It provides, 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 okay. provides an overview of how the business 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 perdón of how the business is performing to do these performance reports mainly collect specific work perform perform perf performance that that analysis, analysis it analyze analyze it and provide 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 suggestions Suggest. suggestion mm -hmm. to help in making decisions this report can narrow down and concentrate 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 on the performance of a specific project or a em, employee, employee or focus on the entire 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 business itself. Okay, very good. Now Salvador. What is a performance report? Defini definition. A performance report is a document that a company creates to define and measure its overall success. It provides an overview of how the business is performing. To do this, Performance report mainly collects specific work performance da data, analyze it, and provide suggestion to, to help in making decision. This report can narrow down 
and concentrate concentrate on the performance of a, a specific project or an employee or focus on the entire business business itself very good now uh, karen rivas what is a performance report definition a performance report is a document that a company creates to define and measure its overall success it provides an overview of how the business is performing to do this performance reports mainly call it a specific work performance data, analyze it, and provide suggestions to help in making decisions. The report can narrow down and concentrate on the performance of a specific project or an employee or focus on the entire business itself. Perfect, very good. Uh, Josh Manserrano. What is a performance report definition? A, perform a performance report is a document that company create a definite and measure in overhaul to see society. Success. It provides society. It provides in overview of how the business is performing. To these performance reports, mainly call it a specific word, performance day, analysis. And analyze. provide I'm sorry. Analyze. Analyze and provide suggestion to help in making decision. This report can narrow down and concentrate and concentrate on the performance of a specific project or an employee or focus on the entire business itself. Okay, nice. Now uh... Marlon dice que no puede. Uh, Gabriela Sánchez. Okay, teacher. What is the performance report definition? A performance report is a document that a company creates to define the measure, measure its overall success. It provides an overview of how to, the business is performing. To these performance reports, many mainly call it specific work performance data analyze, analyze, analyze it and provide suggestion Adjustments. to help su suggestion uh -huh, to help in making decision, the report can narrow down and concentrate on the performance of a specific project or an employee or focus on the ent entry okay. business itself. Okay, very good, perfect. Now, Jocelyn Amaya. What is a performance report definition? A performance report is a document that a company creates to, to define and measure its overall su success. 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 It provides an overview of how the business is performing. To do this perfor performance report, may mainly collects a specific work performance data. Mm -hmm. Data, Anal analyze it um provide suggestion to have suggestion to help in making decision. The report can narrow down and concentrate 
on the performance of a specific project or an employee or focus of the entire business itself. Okay, very good, perfect. Catherine Indira. Not possible. Okay, um, Brenda de Villatoro. Okay. What is performance report? Definition. A performance report is a document that a company creates to define, define, um, Fine. Message. define. Okay. Define and measure is or success it provides an overview of how the business is performing. To do these performing reports mainly collects a specific word performing data analysis and provide suggestion. Suggestions. Hola. Provide suggestions. Suggestion. Provide suggestion to help in making decision. This report can narrow down um concentrate concentration. Concentrate. Concentrate on the perform of a specific project or an employee or focus on the entire 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 business itself okay very good perfect now edwin antonio hey peter what is performance report definition performance report is a document that a company creates to define a measure overall success. It provides an overview of how the business is performing. To do this, performance report mainly collects a specific work performance data, analyzes it, and provides suggestions to help in making decisions. This report can narrow down and concentrate of the performance of a specific project or an employee for focus on the entire business itself. Very good, perfect. Carlos Dominguez. Not possible, okay. Uh, let's see, Rosa del Carmen. What is a performance report? Definition. A performance report is a document that a company creates to define and measure its overall success. It provides an overview of how the business is performance. To do this performance reports mainly collect specific work performance data, analyze and provide suggestions to help in making decisions. This report can narrow down and concentrate on the performance of a specific project or employees or focus on the entire business itself. Okay, very good, nice. Now, Rolando Cáceres. Okay. What is a performance report definition? A performance report is a document that a company creates to define and measure its overall success. It provides an over overview of how to the how the business is performing. To do this, performance reports mainly collect specific work performance data, analyze, analyze, provide suggestions to help in making decisions. This report can narrow down and concentrate to the performance of the specific project or employee 
or focus on the intranet business itself. Okay, very good, nice. Fatima Noemi. What is a performance report? Definition. A performance report is a document that a company creates to define and issue its overall success. It provides an overview of how the business is performing. To do this performance report, mainly collect the specific work performance that analyze it and provide the suggestion to help in making decisions. This report can narrow down and concentrate on the performance of a specific project or employee or focus on the entire business itself. Okay, very good. Now, Carlos Arias. What is a performance report definition? A performance report is a document that a company creates to define and measure its overall success. It provides an overview of how the business is performing. To do this performance report, mainly collect specific work performance data, analyze and provide suggestions to help in making decisions. This report can narrow down and concentrate on the performance of a specific project for an employer, employee, or focus on the entire business itself. Okay, very good, perfect. Now, let's see who's missing. Uh, Jennifer, I don't know if it's possible for you, Jennifer. Not possible. Okay, Irving. Irving, say please. What is a performance report? Definition. A performance report is a document that a company creates to define and measure its overall success. It provides an overview of how the business is performing. To do this, performance reports mainly collect specific work, performance data, analyze it, and provide suggestions to help in making decisions. This report can narrow down and concentrate on the performance of a specific project or an employee or focus on the entire business itself. Very good. Now, Eulise Torres. Okay, not possible. Creo que todos pasamos, ¿verdad? So, uh, let's check some, voc uh, some I mean, uh, pronunciation things. Uh, let's see. Performance process document comment. Creates. Creates. That is very important. Creates. To define. Define. Okay. And measure. 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 It's overall. It's overall. Success. Success. And provides. And provide. An overview. Overview. Uh, let's see what else. Mainly. Mainly. Analyze. Analyze. Suggestions. To test them. Narrow. Narrow. And that's it. So that is it. Let's check some vocabulary now. Uh, ya vimos que era a performance. Ya saben que es un performance report. It's a document that a company creates to define. Creo que se entienden que son measure. What is measure? Medir, será? Medir. Very good. Entonces, para definir y medir, y luego dice, it's overall success. Véanse que ese it's no lleva apóstrofe, entonces eso es un posesivo, ¿verdad? 
Y luego overall, como la palabra en español, ¿verdad? Dame el overall. Dice. Entonces, overall viene de eso, es un sobre todo, o sea, un entero, algo total, ¿verdad? Uh, y success, que es éxito, ¿verdad? O sea, es como para medir el éxito total de la compañía. Luego dice, it provides. ¿Qué es provides? Proveer. Proveer, very good. And overview, ¿qué sería overview? Okay, overview sería como una visión entera, una visión de todas partes, ¿verdad? como cuando se puede ver uh, algo totalmente. On how the business is performing. To do this performance reports mainly collects specific work performance data or data, pues es eso, ¿verdad? data. Analyze it, que sería la analiza, and provide suggestions to help it making decisions. Creo que ahí está claro. This report can narrow down. ¿Qué es narrow? Angosto. Perfecto, es angosto. Entonces aquí como verbo sería, se puede disminuir. Narrow down sería como reducir, algo así. En concentrate, que ustedes saben que es concentrar, on the performance of a specific project or an employee or focus on the entire business itself. O sea, que puede hacerse un análisis de un proyecto, de un empleado, o se puede hacer de todo el negocio completamente. Very good. Pregunta, dudas, questions, my friends. Y itself, teacher, ¿qué significa? Ah, ok. Itself is a sí mismo. A sí mismo. Gracias. Any other question? Ok. Let's check the attendance then. Ok. Recordarles de que es posible que reciban un par de de encuestas de service la que no dice insafor se puede hacer recordarles eso si reciben la que dice insafor esa no se hace la vamos a hacer juntos el viernes a la misma hora el viernes hay que venir porque hay que hacer la encuesta ok um, y hay que terminar la plataforma el fin de semana o a más tardar el lunes solo esos anuncios parroquiales so let's check the attendance now let's see Álvaro Ernesto Alvarado Reyes. Present teacher. Good. Blanca Jennifer Torres de Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Blanca Ruth Orantes Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Brenda Jamilet Bonilla de Villa Toro. Present teacher. Good. Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martínez. Present. Good. Carlos Francisco Arias Sánchez. Present teacher. Good. Daniel Eduardo García López. Edwin Antonio Quintero Sumaya. Present teacher. Good. Eulice Torres Torres. Present. Good. Fátima Noemí Umaña Castro. Present. Good. Gabriela Jamilet Sánchez Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Irving Isaí Cruz Mejía. I'm here. Good. Jocelyn Esmeralda Amaya Vázquez. Present. Good. José Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. I'm here. Good. Josman Atilio Serrano. Here. Good. Karen Lisette Sánchez Castro. Catherine Indira Velázquez Castro. Marlon Osvaldo Paniagua Hernández. Rolando Antonio Cáceres Aquino. Present. Good. Rosa del Carmen Enríquez Flores. Present. Good. And Karen Jamilet Rivas de Ayala. Present teacher. Very good, perfect. Eh, como les había comentado, ahora vamos a ver otro videito, ¿verdad? Tenemos tres videos para ahora. So, vamos a iniciar con ese. Uh, lo vamos a comentar y luego vamos a continuar con la clase de ahora, que siempre es de los procedures, de los uh, reports, performance report. Ok, here we go, my friends. 
The last section that we're going to look, in, and look at in the process of event management is the evaluation and feedback phase. Often, in fact most people don't, don't do this, and it's a big mistake because we actually learn so much from the project we've just done. We've learned what works, what doesn't, um, we've seen which goals and objectives have been met, we've, we've just had this beautiful experience. So if we take it and we convert it into an evaluation and a feedback, next time we can cut out all the little things that, that made it difficult or that were, were not so easy to solve. And we can also prepare the client for the next event. So we've got a base, it's always step one of the next, next event. Because we take this sheet and we say, so many people attended the carnival, um, it didn't work that time of the year, so we just got to move it. This worked really well, the food worked really well. Now the planning for the next year's carnival is almost done. We know at least three of the suppliers we will use again because they're great. We know which ones we have to change. So it's a very important step in the process for us as event coordinators to make our jobs easier in the future and to fix things. It's also a very important step for the client because he goes now and looks at what was promised what his most wanted response was and whether or not this worked for him. Remember when we're dealing with corporates and you guys will see in your sub uh, subject modules, you're doing PR, you're doing touching on marketing, because everything ties in. So now the client will say, I've allocated this much money to making this happen. Did it happen? If it happened, great, he'll do it again. If it didn't happen, he can't keep allocating budgets and money to things that don't work. So he has to change that. So this is a very important for him too. He needs to understand what worked and what didn't from a corporate side. If your wedding doesn't work out um, and you have to get divorced, unfortunately, like, that's not, you can't fix the next, well, maybe you can fix the next. Maybe it wasn't the event, maybe it was the husband. Okay, but, but you do that, you measure how far you've come, you measure what's happening, how can we fix things, how can we do this better next time. So in this phase, we first and foremost look at, did we meet the event objectives? Remember, we did them in the research phase, in the design phase. We had always have planning, all the time, implementation, every time we're keeping our goals and objectives in mind, have we met them? Yes or no? Which ones worked, which ones didn't? Is it something that was major, is it something that was small? What worked, what didn't? Feedback reports, those get sent to the clients. Sometimes you've used a security company um, or another company and let's say three of the security guards were drunk and they were lying down sleeping behind the barn. So you would give a feedback report, you'd say, Dear company, we will not be using your services in the future because three of your staff members were doing this, you give feedback to people so that they know how to fix their things as well. Event evaluation should be done during and after the event. Make notes, because as you're walking, implementing, and people are telling you things, you're writing things down, you're experiencing things, and it's so busy that sometimes you forget. So make notes, you're always gonna have your little file with you, with your checklist, so you'll say like, mm, three security guards drank the security dance, remember we did that in class? <laughs> okay, so you'll make a note, like this was a problem, or you know, that person, that representative was really rude to my client. We did a, um, a exhibition, what was it called? The one at Kai Lami, I think it's the outdoor show or whatever. And we were delivering things and my client was with me because we were late and she was carrying a box and I was carrying a box and we were trying to get to the stand. And the security guard said, you can't come in here. And we, I mean, you could see our stand and we said, we girls, we like struggling, these boxes are heavy, can't we just put it right over there? And he actually pushed my client. He physically pushed her. <laughs> so as you can imagine, we do not support the exhibition anymore. We did bring it to their attention, but that is terrible. Imagine pushing someone. That's the same person that's paid for the raw floor spacing, that's paid to have an event to support your show. So that security member had such a big impact on the whole show because it was for a very big client. 
So you need to manage your staff and you need to know what's going on because somebody doing something could affect the future you have with your clients or the future the product has with, with society. So you need to manage that. You need to know what's going on. So during the event, we're managing things. If that was my event, I would have said, I do apologize. You, sir, off the premises, you're no longer working out. It's all on your salary and whatever later. I would have removed that person. But those are the kind of things we need to manage as we go along. So we're doing the feedback all the time. We're making sure that we can, when the event is over, we have the knowledge and the things written down that worked and that didn't work. So in summary, we, are looked, we, look, we were looking today at the five processes that happen in event management. There's a lot of detail, there's, there's insights, this is a structure. But it gives you an idea of how complicated it can actually be. Sometimes when you tell people, I'm an events coordinator, they go, oh, you wear high heels and you like do nothing the whole time and you just have lunch with your clients. It couldn't be further from the truth. I've washed floors, I've scrubbed toilets, we've done everything. You do everything, you wear flat shoes, you wear high heels when you meet with the clients and you wear high heels when you give them feedback. The rest of the time, you wear comfortable shoes because you're running. You work really hard and you have to have a project management brain to put all this together. It's not this glamorous, easy, stupid job that people say it is. It's actually really, it's really hard and it takes a, a certain person, a certain, a certain discipline to actually pull it off. So the five phases, we have to do research, we have to design, Plan. planning, implementing. implementing and coordination, evaluation and, evaluation and feedback. Thank you. Okay. What did you understand on this one? Anybody? Está un poco difícil el acento como que es inglés, ¿verdad? Dice que no, no es inglés, de hecho, no es americano tampoco. Quizá el problema con ella es que lo hace bien conversacional. O sea, como que estuviéramos hablando nosotros, hey, fíjate de que por allá nosotros estuvimos por cierto, porque entonces empezó a hablar rápido y yo la entiendo y nos entendemos porque hablamos español, pero alguien que esté hablando español o que esté aprendiendo español no nos va a entender, ¿verdad? Entonces, ese es el asunto, que no es lo mismo venir y dar una clase así conversacional en la que esto se hace así, se dice así, que estar hablando normal. No. Esa creo que es la diferencia con este video, que es un inglés bien conversacional. Entonces, pero no sé si captaron más o menos de qué iba el, el video. ¿No hay días? Gestión de... O evaluando también la gestión de eventos, Bien, ponía bueno. ahí algunos indicadores, ¿verdad? Exacto, había, enumeraba algunas cosas que teníamos que tener en cuenta. Ajá. Uh -huh. Very good, perfect, nice. ¿Alguna otra, algún otro comentario? Ok. Poco a poco vamos a ir entendiendo un poco más, ¿verdad? So, by now we're going to continue here reading. Everybody, let's repeat. Okay? Even though. Even though. Even though. Even though. Even though performance reports vary. Performance, performance reports, reports vary, vary, vary. From company to company. From, from company, company to company. 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 They all essentially. They, they all okay. essentially involve the same elements. Involve the same, involve the same element of data and data processes. Of data, data and data, data, data processes. processes. These include. These include the, the goals and objectives of a company. The goals the and objectives of the company. The vision for the next five years. The, the vision for the next five years. Key performance indicators, KPI. 
Frequency of KPI measurement. Frequency of KPI measurement. Source of the data. Source of the data. That is used for monitoring purposes. That is used for monitoring purposes. Some examples of performance reports are. Status report. Progress reports. Progress reports. Trend reports. Trend reports. Variance reports. Forecasting reports. Etc. Okay, pronunciation questions. La segunda palabra. Uh, esa van juntas, que dice, even though. Even though. Even though. Even though. Solo ese sería tú. Any other question? Pronunciation questions? Pronunciation teacher. Um, you sit for moni monitoring purpose. Uh, just for monitoring purposes. Monitoring. Monitoring. Purpose. Purpose. Okay. Any other pronunciation questions? This include uh, um, this. Esa palabra is this. This include include. Mm -hmm. Forecasting. Forecasting. I don't know. Any other pronunciation question? Essentially. Essentially. Creo que es así, pero ¿dónde está? No recuerdo. Ah, sí. Essentially. Like. Essentially. Essentially. Mm -hmm. Teacher, pure purpose. Purpose. Uh, ese creo que era plural, ¿verdad? Déjame encontrarla. Está en los bullying, el okay. último. Ok. Purposes. 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 Any other pronunciation questions? For, 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 eca, for a casting. Forecasting. 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 Report or report? Reports. Re reports. Reports. Okay, we are going to read then. Vamos a leer. A ver. Eh, Álvaro. Okay. Even touch, even touch performance even report. Through. Even touch performance okay. report. Que te dice otra palabra. Even two. Even two. Even two performance reports vary from company to company. They all essentially involve some the same the same elements of data and data, process, process, the incline. This include. This include. This include. The goals and objectives of company. The vision for next five years. Okay, performance indicator. 
KPA. Frequency of KPA measurement. Source of the source of the date. Data or data. Uh -huh. Data that it use use for monitoring. Monitoring purpose. Purposes. Purposes. Some example of the performance report are state report. Status. Status report, progress reports, trend reports, variance reports, forecasting reports, etc. Very good, perfect. Now, Blanca Ruth. Even to tools, Even performance. Three. Reports vary from company to company. They are essentially able the same elements of that of date and date process processes. Process. This como es processes. 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 This in, in a Include the goals, the goal and objective of a company, the vision for the next five years, key per performance indicator, KPI, frequency, frequency of KPI, KPI. K, 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 P, I, measurement source of the date that is used for mon monitoring purpose. purposes. Purposes. Some examples of performance reports are states, status, states. Reports, progress reports, trim reports, variance reports, for casting reports, etc. Et nice. Very good. So now, uh, Salvador Bernal. Even though Performed report vary from company to company. They all essentially involve the same element of data and data processes. These include the goal and objective of a company, the vision for the next five years, key performance indicator, KPI, frequency of KPI measure source of data that used for monitor purposes. Some examples of permanent performance report are status report, progress report, trend report, variance report, forecasting report, etc. Very good, perfect, nice. Now let's see um, Karen Rivas. Okay, teacher. Even though performance reports vary from company to company, they all essentially involve the same elements of data and data processes. These include the goals and objectives of a company, the vision for the next five years, K performance indicators KPI, frequency frequency of KPA, KPY, KPI. measurement I measurement source of data that is used for monitoring purposes. 
Some examples of performance reports are status reports, progress reports, trends reports, variance reports, and forces team reports, etc. Okay, nice, very good. Now, Josman Serrano. Every time performance report vary from company to company. They hold essentially involve the same element of day of and day processes. This include the goals and objectives of a company, the vision for the next five years, K performance indicator, KPA, frequently of KPA measurement of the day that is used for monitor, monitoring purpose. Some examples for of performance report are stat report, progress report, trend report, variance report, forecasting report, etc. Okay, very good, perfect. Now it's Jocelyn Amaya. Not possible. Catherine Indira. Not possible. Let's see uh, Brenda de Villatoro. Even though performance reports vary from company to company, they all essentially involve the same elements of data and data processes, this include the goals and objectives of a company, the vision for the next five years, K performance indicators, KPI, KPI, frequency of KPI measurement, source of the data, that is used for monitoring purposes. Uh, some examples of performance reports are status report, progress report, trend report, variance report, forecasting report, etc. Very good, perfect. Now, Edwin Antonio. Okay, teacher. Even though performance reports vary from company to company, they all essentially involve the same element of data of day and data processes. This includes the goals and objective of company, the vision of the next five years, key performance indicator. Frequency of key performance indicator measurement, sure source of the data that is used for monitoring purposes. Some examples of performance report are status report, progress report, frame report, variance report, if forecasting report, etc. Very good, nice. Now Rosa del Carmen. Okay. okay, even though performance reports vary from company to company, they are essential in solving the same elements of data and data process. This includes the goals and objectives of company, the vision for the next five years, key performance indicators, frequency of KPA measures, Source of the date that is used for monitoring. What is the pronunciation? Monitoring. Used for monitoring purpose. Some examples of performance reports are status reports, prognosis reports, friend reports, variance reports, forecasting reports, etc. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, Rolando Cáceres. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, even through performance report, vary for company to company. They all essentially involve the same elements of data and data process. This, this include, include the goals and the objectives of a company, the vision for the next five years, K performance indicators, KPI, KPI, frequency of KPI menstrual Mens sorry, how to pronounce that? Uh, measurement. Measurement. Source the data. Source the data that is used for monitoring purpose. Some examples of performance report, status reports, progress report, trade reports, variance reports, forecasting reports, etc. Very good, nice. Now, Fatima, no, I mean. They all essentially involve the same element of the process. This includes the goals and objectives of a company, the vision for the next five years, K performance indicator, KPA. KPI. 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 Frequency of KPI measurement source of the data that is used, used for monitoring purposes. Some examples of performance reports are status reports, progress reports, trend reports, variance reports, foreign testing reports, etc. Very good. Now, Carlos Arias. Even though performance report vary from company to company, they all essentially involve the same element of data and data process. This includes historic, the goals and objective of a company, the vision for the next five years, the performance indicators, KPI, frequency of KPI measurement, source of the data, data that is used for monitoring purposes. Some examples of performance reports are status reports, progress reports, trend reports, variance reports, forecasting reports, etc. Very good. So now Irving, you say. Even though performance report vary from company to company, they all essentially involve the same element of data and data process. This includes the goals and objectives of a company, the vision for the next five years, key performance indicators, KPI, frequency of KPI measurement, source of the uh, data that is used for monitoring purpose. Some examples of key performance reports are status reports, progress reports, trend reports, variance reports, and forecasting reports, etc. Very good, nice. Now, Eulice Torres. Okay. Even though performance reports vary from company to company, they all essentially involve the, the same elements of data and data processes. This include 
the goals and objects of company, the vision for the next five years, K performance indicators, KPI, frequency of KPI measurements, sure of the data that is in use for monitoring purpose. Some, exal some examples of performance reports are a status report, progress report, trend reports, varying reports, and forecasting reports, reports, etc. Hey, very good, nice. And now Carlos Dominguez. Not possible, okay. So let's check some pronunciation thing. The first one is even though. La primera, esa sé que es un poco rara, difícil, pero se van a acostumbrar, es bien fácil, ¿verdad? Even though. Uh, performance reports vary from company to company. They all essentially involve. Ahí se tiene que decir la última V, involve. The same elements of, uh, recordemos que esta es data o data. Pero si decimos date, esa ya es otra palabra, ¿verdad? O sea, puede ser data, data. Se tiene que decir la última, ¿ok? Uh, and data processes. These include, these, ¿ok? It says that these include the goals and objectives of a company, the vision for the next five years, key performance indicators, y recordemos que las letras son KPI, ¿verdad? Frequency. Frequency of KPI measurement. Measurement. Source of the data that is used for monitoring purposes. Es es plural, purposes. Some examples of performance reports are status report, progress reports, trend reports, variance reports, forecasting reports, etc. Okay. Eso es en cuanto a la pronunciación. Veamos qué significan algunas cosas. Even though. ¿Alguien sabe qué es even though? Aunque. Aunque. O a pesar. A pesar de. Aun cuando. Algo por ahí es verdad. Performance ya lo vimos. Reports very. ¿Qué es very? Muy. Varían. Ese es varían. Variar. Ajá, eso es bien importante. Imagínense, no es lo mismo decir very que very. ¿Verdad? Se parece, pero no es lo mismo. ¿verdad? Entonces, from company to company. Luego dice, bueno, donde dice from company to company, es como si dijéramos nosotros en español de una compañía a otra. From company to company. Luego dice, they all essentially involve. Ellos todas esencialmente, casi siempre ese el y que está al final de las palabras es un adverbio y es mente, ¿verdad? esencialmente, envuelve the same, que es the same los mismos los mismos o el mismo, very good elementos de data que es data, verdad, información o procesos de data estos, recordemos que es, se dice these estos, y ese es plural, incluyen. incluyen. Muy bien. Goals, ¿qué es goals? Objetivos. Objetivo, meta, meta ¿verdad? De hecho, es meta. De, por meta eso, es. Ajá, ajá. Cuando, cuando dicen, cuando decimos gol en fútbol, es porque entró la pelota en la meta, ¿verdad? Se alcanzó la meta. And objectives, que son objetivos, of a company. The vision for the next five years. Creo que eso se entiende. Luego, los Key Performance Indicators, esos son bien comunes en todas las compañías, son los indicadores claves de rendimiento. Casi siempre se encuentran como eh, las letras, ¿verdad? El KPI. KPI siempre van a ser Key Performance Indicators. Que son como, esos son como eh, los porcentajes, ¿verdad? Como los indicadores que le dicen a uno qué tan bien o qué tan mal está la compañía. Luego dice frequency, recordemos la pronunciación frequency, frecuencia de la medida, measurement, es medida, ya lo habíamos visto, de los key performance indicators. Source, ¿qué es source? Source, 
Source. Source es fuente, como fuente de información, de dónde viene, ¿verdad? Source es la fuente de la información que está uh, usándose o que se usa para propósitos, purposes, es propósitos de monitoreo, monitoring, ¿ok? Y luego dice, some examples of performance reports are status reports. ¿Qué sería un status report? Star. Un reporte de un estado, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo está? Progress report, que sería un reporte de progreso, cómo ha ido un proyecto o algo moviéndose. Trend reports, ¿qué es trend? ¿Alguien sabe qué es trend? Tendencia. Tendencia, muy bien. Reporte de tendencia. Variance report, que serían reportes de varianza y cómo han ido variando, más que todo en estadística. Luego tenemos forecasting. ¿Alguien sabe qué es forecasting? Pronóstico, artículo. Pronóstico. Very good. Un reporte de pronóstico. Se espera que en diciembre vendamos tanto ¿verdad? y hay que pegarle a esa meta. Entonces, eso sería el vocabulario. Do you have any questions before we finish this part? No, teacher. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Uh, we are going to practice. Hoy tenemos free practice. Práctica libre. Vamos a platicar. A ver, hablemos todos ahora. Vamos a ver cómo sale así. Um, what is, my friends, more popular? Bread or tortillas? What do you think? In El Salvador, what is more popular? Bread? Do you know what is bread? ¿Qué es bread? Pan. 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 What is more popular in El Salvador? Bread or tortilla? What do you like better? What do you prefer? In the morning, bread. Bread. Tortilla. 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 Okay. I like this different moment. Eat um, bread or tortilla. Ah, okay, so you eat both. Uh, so, in which moments do you eat tortilla? In the lunch, for example. Okay, and at night in the, the dinner. Bread. Yeah. Okay, very good. And the other people? I think uh, the most the popular are tortillas, but I don't like tortillas. You don't like tortillas, okay? I don't like, and I don't eat tortillas. Okay, very good. Perfect. I really all all Thai tortillas. Oh, you eat I don't like only tortillas, okay? Well, I I believe that as just Montserrat, in my case, it depends. I prefer my in my personal opinion, I prefer bread. Uh, but yes, yeah, sometimes tortillas are very important. At lunch, almost always, when you are eating meat with beans and things like that, right? So that is very good. Perfect. Chair, my, my nutritionist uh -huh. recommends a tortilla for the calcium. Really? Better than bread? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that one, so... Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't know that one, you know. I like better bread, but I eat tortillas. But I, I eat more bread than tortillas. Yeah, maybe we need to change that part. And what is the most what do you believe is the most popular? Pupusas of cheese, beans, pork. Which one are more popular in El Salvador? Pupusas. 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 Okay, cheese, cheese and, and loroco. Okay, that is something that I yeah. Like. I hungry in this moment. 
Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very late. I think I'm going to check some. <laughs> Pupusas of cheese and beans and the, the dinner is good. Okay, cheese and beans. Very good. Nice. And the other people, what do you prefer? Pupusa, cheese, and beans. Cheese and beans. Okay. Cheese and Arocco. I'm sorry, cheese? And Arocco. And Loroco. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe... like huh? I like that uh, Pupusa is great. It's very good for me. Okay, very good. Yeah, they're very nice, right? Uh, yeah, I believe, yeah, I mean, every time that I ask this question, almost everybody says cheese and beans, cheese and beans. Um, I don't like beans and pupusas, to be honest with you. I like, I like cheese and pork. And other, other, what is other that is popular? For example, I, I really like uh, chorizo. I, I really like mushrooms. You know what is mushrooms? Yes. Hongos. I really like that one. Crazy pupusa. What is the crazy pupusa? Uh, contain different products. For example, cheese, beans, and chorizo. Ah, and others. Mushrooms. <laughs> and rice. And yeah. rice. Rice. Okay. And do you prefer pupusas of corn or rice? Um, corn. I prefer corn. I prefer rice. I rice prefer. Right. Why rice? Rice. All these different pupusas I like and rice. <laughs> And heat and hot is very good. Very nice. And do you eat the pupusas with sauce and curtido or only sauce or only curtido? It's better with, uh, with both. With both, okay. With both, that's a curtido. Okay, sauce and curtido. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. only sauce. Only sauce for you. Hey, okay. yeah, I believe sauce is very popular. Curtido depends on many situations, but a lot of people they really like. Nice. Very good. <laughs> nice. Yeah, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very Different from pupusas. What is the most popular food in El Salvador? Different from pupusas. The place pupusa on Olocuilta. No, but different. Right. No pupusas. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Other Mexican food. Food. Okay. Mexican, Mexican food, like tacos and yeah. Mexican, Mexican food. food. Mexican, Mexican food. food. Okay. Mexican food. Chinese. Food. Chinese food. Chinese food is very popular now, right? Yeah. Korean food. Korean food. Yeah, Korean I believe food. that is it's very good, but uh, maybe the problem is that it's not, po I mean, not common. In San Salvador, for example, I know there are places, but in Santa Ana, for example, we don't have restaurants of Korean food. No, but in San Salvador, está el pabellón coreano. Yeah, but only there, right? Here in Santa Ana, we, we can't. It's different. The, the Mexican food is everywhere, like the pupusas. In yeah. every corner, you will find uh, Mexican food. That is very true. I, I have seen that one. So, like two years ago and now, uh, you find pupusas and Mexican food. That is very, very popular, right? And uh, another food that I believe is very popular here in Santa Ana is very popular. I don't know why. Is pollo cafet. I don't like it very much, but it's very popular. Yeah, a lot of people they come and eat that part. And 
Jorge Santana ahí está torta loca creo que así se llama yeah this ahí, place in the park uh, uh, sí in the park I'm very delicious the uh, two two occasionally eat and like you yeah that is true it's a very big bread you know it's very 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 big with a lot of fun. yeah it's very popular some pollo let me serve <laughs> Yeah. Pollo is very popular as well. It's very cheap. Yeah. It's very good. <laughs> Mr. Pollo. In, Sons in Sonsonati, Sonsonati um, and uh, Caluco is popular South Gallina. Oh, that is very popular. Here in Santa Ana, it's very popular for Saturdays and Sundays. Sundays, yeah, that is very, very popular. In Caluco is over over day every day yeah every day i am that is interesting very good and another food that is very popular for the weekends is um pata soup you know that is also very popular here in santana this very popular. delicious i really like that one it's very very good i don't like pizza don't you like? Not for sure. So, uh, uh, and vegetables. Ah, okay. Very good. The interesting. Very nice. Okay. And uh, what is a food that you have tasted that is is rare? Rare food. Comida rara que han probado. Rare food. Uh, tacuacin. Tacuacin. I never tried yeah. that one, but uh, and how yeah. is that one? Is it's good? <laughs> Not good. It's like uh, chicken. It's like chicken. Okay. Very good. That is the, the old people say in every uh, like garrobo says it's like chicken, but I don't think so. <laughs> This is really that is a snake snake meat snake meat really? yes snake. and yes. it was it was good or not that good is uh, a fish like fish yes a mining snake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other rare food that you have tried? No other. Okay. Imagine this. Imagine that somebody comes from the U.S. to visit El Salvador. And they say, uh, I want you to recommend a restaurant. Which restaurant do you recommend? Only one. Cebollines restaurant. Cebollines is very good. That's true. Very good, yeah. <laughs> I and recommend uh, Tony Romas. Tony Romas is very good. The ribs, they very good. The Argentine Papa teacher in Santa Ana. Okay, that's a good one, yeah. Any other recipe I, that you recommend? I recommend Tacos Hermanos. Tacos Hermanos, I never tried that one. Is that in San Salvador? Yeah, it's always full. Tacos Hermanos, I have to go there. It's really tasty. Okay, so we have to be there, not that hungry, right? <laughs> really? <laughs> Very good. Any Can other comments? La Pampa. Pampa. Very good. Nice. I recommend Buffalo Wings. Which one? I'm sorry. I recommend Buffalo Wings. Buffalo is very good. I really like Buffalo. Yeah. Good. Perfect. And uh, 
let me think what else we can think about. A recommendation that you can say to a person that comes from the U.S. Imagine that somebody comes from the U.S.A. What recommendation do you do you say to that person? To visit uh, Guatepec Lake. Guatepec Lake. I, I love Guatepec. It's my favorite place here in El Salvador. Ah, oh, it's amazing. It's very good. Yeah. What other recommendation do you give to other people from other country that visit El Salvador? Or any recommendation? Recommended this is the uh, um, Ruta de las Flores. Okay, flower shoot. Yeah, that is a flower good one. Yeah, it's very nice. Any other recommendation that you can give to anybody there? The Boca Park. Ah, okay, very good. Park, very good. Nice. Recomendaciones en general. ¿Qué le diríamos a alguien de otro país que viene a El Salvador? In English. Any recommendation? Recommendation visit eh, Ruta de la Paz. Um, um, beach. No, the beach. beach. Eh, eh, Costa del Sol. I really like that beach. Costa del Sol is very good. Nice. Any other recommendation that we can give to a person that visits El Salvador? How do you say Centro de San Salvador? Downtown. Downtown. To go to downtown? Okay, so now a different question. If you, if you had the chance to visit any place in the world, where would you go? I visited the Berlin and London. Berlin in Germany. Berlin, Germany and London in, in England. London, England. Very good. Yeah. Nice places. Very nice. And the rest of the people? I actually, I, I, I actually, I will come through my dream to visit Paris in two months. Very good. That is going to be a very good experience. Nice. Yeah. And actually, two years ago, the other city that, I, that was my dream was Rome. Rome. Yeah, Italy is very nice. It's, yeah, uh, really nice. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. Very good place. Any other? Any other? Richard, excuse me, usted está preguntando qué lugares se ha visitado o cuáles le gustaría visitar. Lo que le gustaría visitar. Ah, ok. Eh, I I like visit uh, Praga. Okay, that is a very good place as well. Very nice, Prague. I will visit Canada. Canada, Canada is a beautiful place. A lot of nature. People are very very nice in Canada. Any other place that you would like to visit? Ok, buena práctica. Imagínense, hablamos casi 20 minutos y ni cuenta nos dimos. That was very, very good. Ok, eh, recordarles, ¿verdad?, que hay que terminar la plataforma el fin de semana eh, o el lunes o más tarde. Terminarla completamente. Y que si les llegan, bueno, posiblemente le llegan dos encuestas o solo una, la de Insafor, pues seguro que les va a llegar. O sea, si le dan clic, clic ahí al link. Uh, bueno, casi siempre eso trae un video que dice las instrucciones para llenar la encuesta y un montón de cosas. Y trae una, un, un link para que le muestra la, la encuesta, pero arriba dice Instaform en grande. Esa no la vayan a hacer, porque esa la vamos a hacer 
juntos el martes, que es nuestro último día de clase de este módulo y de este año. Entonces, espero que todos estén el martes, bueno, que todos estén todas las otras clases también, que solo nos falta viernes, lunes y martes. Y terminamos. Ok, very good. Uh, before we finish, do you have questions about the class of today? No questions. Very good. So we're going to check the attendance. El 101 de ahora es para Catherine Indira. So let's see. Álvaro, Ernesto, Alvarado, Reyes. Present teacher. Good. Blanca, Jennifer, Torres de Martinez. Present teacher. Good. Blanca, Ruth, Orantes, Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Brenda Jamilet Bonilla de Villa Toro. Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martínez. Present. Good. Carlos Francisco Arias Sánchez. Present teacher. Good. Daniel Eduardo García López. Edwin Antonio Quinteros Umaña. Present teacher. Good. Eulice Torres Torres. Present. Good. Fátima Noemi Umaña Castro. Present. Good. Gabriela Jamilet Sánchez Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Irving Isaí Cruz Mejía. I'm here. Good. Jocelyn Esmeralda Amaya Vázquez. José Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. I'm here. Good. Josman Atilio Serrano. Present. Good. Karen Lisset Sánchez Castro. Catherine Indira Velázquez Castro. Marlon Osvaldo Paniagua Hernández. Rolando Antonio Cáceres Aquino. Present. Good. Rosa del Carmen Enríquez Flores. Present. Good. And Karen Jamilet Rivas de Ayala. Present, teacher. Perfect. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Hello, Brenda. Bonjour. Hello. Can you hear me?